Dr. Ma, thank you so much for meeting with us at the ASPERS meeting 2017. You had a presentation, a debate uh, about intracameral antibiotics. Uh, your argument was that intracameral antibiotics are the safest and best option. Can you tell us a little bit about your presentation? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I think it's a very timely topic. Um, right now, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about drug delivery, uh, about compliance, about, you know, honestly, drug costs. Uh, and so a lot of uh, surgeons have been looking for better options or alternatives. In addition, uh, for the past probably 10 to 12 years, there's been a lot of uh, interest in uh, prophylaxis for cataract surgery and better ways of uh, proving what we're doing either works or doesn't work. Uh, and among the methods that have been looked at are intracameral uh, antibiotics. Um, intracameral antibiotics have a pretty long history since actually 1991 when the first uh, study was published in the peer-reviewed journals. Uh, and over time, it's just kind of gained in momentum and there's just been study after study after study proving the efficacy of intracameral uh, antibiotics, uh, including uh, very large studies in the U.S showing that intracameral antibiotics uh, are superior to what uh, we normally do, uh, which is use topical antibiotics. As far as transonular uh, technique, um, you know, I think I successfully argued that uh, there's a lot more data in the peer-reviewed literature regarding intracameral antibiotics. I think right now the transonular technique um, you know, th is a wait and see. Uh, it is another interesting uh, way of trying to administer uh, drugs to the eye, uh, finishing cataract surgery to improve compliance and to help prevent uh, endophthalmitis. But, you know, the jury is, I think, is still out uh, on transonular as a potentially superior technique to intracameral. Sure. Are there any benefits to transonular antibiotics that maybe the intracameral doesn't offer or vice versa? Yeah, so I think just for your uh, viewers, you know, the main arguments that I made were, number one, the transonular technique uh, included a suspension steroid, which uh, potentially can cloud the vision uh, for at least uh, hours, if not days or weeks. Uh, number two is the potential for changing uh, where the effective lens position uh, is going to end up. Uh, and there have been some case reports of the effective lens position changing uh, because of uh, the medications uh, uh, being placed uh, into the anterior vitreous. Uh, number three is, again, there really isn't any proof that this is superior to conventional uh, eye drops. As far as the uh, advantages of intracameral uh, antibiotics, number one, again, there are many studies which show that the intracameral antibiotics are superior to topical drops. Number two is it's a clear solution, and so uh, therefore at the conclusion of surgery, um, the patients can see just as well as they would with uh, conventional uh, surgery without intracameral medications. And number three is this is a technique that we as cataract surgeons utilize on every single cataract surgery case. It's not a new technique. It's not a new um, type of uh, procedure that we've got to learn uh, and deal with. So in light of this, in, in light of your debate, what would be your main take-home point to the clinician in his or her daily practice? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, what we've been doing just in general as a group, uh, as surgeons, we've always been trying to improve the outcomes, improve the uh, patient experience, and I think intracameral medications in general uh, improve the efficacy of what we're trying to do by preventing uh, infections. Number two is it improves the patient experience and uh, it obviously will help with uh, compliance. I think in general this is a great uh, subject for debate because again everybody's kind of in the same uh, boat. We're all trying to uh, improve the patient experience and improve outcomes.